Thank you for that question. I, right, I think it's always interesting to think about the processes by which fields operate and, 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 and by which they, they, they try to make progress. And certainly this, this realization of how interdisciplinary computing was, I think different researchers had this at different points in time. For me, really, that I think that moment when it, it, it became so clear to me was, again, this period I just mentioned when I was in graduate school in the, in the early 1990s with the growth of the world, world Wide Web, right? That suddenly it was not about the computer, you know, the artifact, this laptop that I'm, I'm on speaking to you with its CPU and its processing units, which was really a lot of the focus of computing in the 1970s and 80s was the computer, the, the artifact. And suddenly in the 1990s, it was really the connectivity, the network, the system as a, as a platform for communication and self-expression. And it was clear that in order to understand the web and the content that was on the web, to be able to search it, organize its information, you know, harness it in a way that was going to be useful for people, was going to require that we draw on so many areas, computing, applied math, and statistics for the technical questions, uh, together with areas of social sciences, economics, sociology, psychology, political science, many of those areas, for understanding the behavioral, social, and market dynamics going on, and then combining with law and policy to think about the, re the responses that society will have to those changes. And so that kind of interdisciplinary work obviously is you know, very challenging to bridge the barriers in methods, training, and terminology that span these different areas. And here I, I would actually echo what Professor Nathans was saying in his remarks about the importance of just interaction, dialogue, and conversation in that scientific process. I, I find that spanning these interdisciplinary divides that reach all the way from computing to economics and sociology to law really for me has relied on finding collaborators in these other areas where there's kind of a combination of two things, right? A, a complementary set of perspectives, right? So their way of thinking about problems is sort of genuinely different from my own, but somehow the ability to develop a common language with them so that we can actually compare perspectives and try to combine them in a way that ultimately makes sense to each other. And so some of my co closest collaborators have come from the, these other disciplines. So people like David Easley and Larry Bloom in economics, Karen Levy and Michael Macy in sociology, or Sendhil Mullinath in, in the, the behavioral sciences. And in some sense, some of my most durable and rewarding collaborations have really been a, a, across these areas when I've found someone that I can talk to um, and, and really think about things together with in ways that are sort of both complementary, but in ways that also make sense to each other.